In this video, I will show you how to match this graph to one of these secant or cosecant functions. So, notice two things. Uh, you have to understand that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So, in order to graph secant, you need to start with cosine. And also, you need to know that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So the cosecant graph will sort of be, be based on the sine function. All right, so let's see if we can use the process of elimination to weed out a couple of these. Um, I'm noticing that some of the equations have a midline of negative 2. So this number on the end is going to tell you the midline. And these two have a midline of negative 2, while these two have a midline of negative 4. That should be easy to identify. So notice if you look at the highs and lows, right, these peaks and these valleys, right in the middle between them is right here at negative 2. So the midline is negative 2. Therefore, we can eliminate uh, these two possibilities. All right, so we've just narrowed it down to these. Okay, so notice that they are both, uh, they both have a phase shift of pi to the left. Notice that the way a phase shift works is it's the opposite of what it looks like. So if it's plus, it's actually to the left. So both of these two graphs, we can say that they are uh, shifted to the left by pi. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, if I were to graph uh, a cosine function, so the parent function for cosine looks like this. Cosine starts off up high, and then it goes low, and then it goes back to high again. So this is what y equals cosine x would look like. Okay, on the other hand, the sine function looks like this. Uh, it starts at the origin, and it goes up and down and back. So this would be y equals sine x. So here's what we have to focus on. In between the peaks and valleys, this is where the sine function or cosine function will travel. All right, I guess we'll use this as well. So it's going to be doing something like this. Okay, you know what, I think I'll alternate colors. Not, I better not. All right, I'll just stick with one color for now. Okay, so we need to figure out, um, considering that the graph has been shifted to the left by pi, um, is this a cosine function that's been shifted to the left pi? Or, or is it a sine function that's been shifted to the left by pi? Well, um, imagine that we had a cosine function. All right, remember the look of a cosine function is like this. So this is what one period of a cosine function would look like. Now, what would happen if I shifted this to the left by pi? Would it still land on, exactly on the graph? Well, notice that pi is the width of one space. So if I shifted to the left by pi, I'd be shifting to the left one entire space, and that would land right here on the graph. So if I shift a cosine function to the left by pi, it's still going to match. 
So I'm betting that um, this is a cosine function. And remember that if it's a cosine function, then uh, that makes it a secant function. You know, the actual graph is a secant function. So I'm betting that this one down here at the bottom is going to be the answer. Um, however, let me back up and contrast with a sine function. A sine function um, that had a period of pi, uh, it's clear that this graph ha repeats every pi, so the period is definitely pi. A sine function would look like this. All right, notice how I'm matching this shape. Now, if I were to shift this pi to the left, okay, moving it one whole space to the left, that would just look like this. And that does not match the graph at all. So let's check the answer. I'm definitely going with secant. Let's see how we did. And that is, in fact, the answer.